I was asked to be part of this um, conference on frontotemporal dementia uh, to talk about two related conditions called um, corticobasal degeneration and progressive supranuclear palsy. And they're related to um, frontotemporal dementia on uh, clinical grounds in that there are some, there's some overlap in the kinds of cognitive or behavioral problems that uh, patients have. Um, but also, they're related on pathological grounds in the sense that this um, protein tau builds up in the brains of some patients that have FTD and also in the brains of patients that have corticobasal degeneration or CBD um, and progressive supranuclear palsy or PSP. What um, CBD and PSP have in common is that they have um, a cognitive and behavioral component uh, like a dementia component and they also have a movement disorder component. So taking CBD first, um, patients that have CBD will have actually pretty good memory. Their memory is, is typically relatively spared, um, but they have difficulty with other things, most prominently with um, kind of multitasking, paying attention, um, planning and organizing and problem solving. And they may also have difficulty with um, kind of visual spatial processing or kind of understanding you know, where things are relative to each other in space. Um, in terms of their motor disorder, they often have um, a very asymmetric Parkinson's-like condition where one side of the body is quite rigid um, and, you know, it doesn't do what they want it to do. Um, it might progress to the point that they feel like their limb is, is useless to them. And sometimes there can be involuntary movements where the limb might take on a certain posture or jerk or have a tremor uh, that's outside of the person's control. Um, in progressive supranuclear palsy or PSP, there's also um, you know, cognitive and behavioral problems involving this um, kind of planning and organizing and multitasking. In addition, there can be a lot of personality changes like um, apathy or impulsive decision making. Um, and from the motor standpoint, um, patients with PSP will have um, also like rigidity in their body. They have a loss of balance early on and may have very frequent falls. Um, and in addition, the part of the brain that controls voluntary eye movements can be affected. Um, and so they have difficulty in particular looking up and down. This is obviously a, a difficult situation that requires a lot of adjustment for the person who's affected by the condition and by their um, you know, family members and friends. And so when we're thinking about you know, um, how to you know, treat people that have these conditions, um, we're really thinking about what symptoms are bothersome to them and what treatments we might have to alleviate um, these symptoms. People can have you know, a lot of stiffness in a limb and that limb can become very difficult to unbend and it can be painful. And so we might try different kinds of medications to relax the muscles and we even try uh, Botox to weaken the muscles just enough that the person may experience that the stiffness isn't as bad as it had been. One of the hardest things, though, is that we, at the current time, don't have you know, a cure for CBD or PSP, and we have ways of managing symptoms, but we don't have a way to slow down the underlying progression of the disease. And, and that's where this kind of like, you know, recent research on tau has become so important. So now that we know that these conditions are um, associated with the accumulation of abnormal tau in the brain. There's been an explosion of research, you know, looking into ways to target this abnormal tau protein and um, keep it from accumulating or help it to clear from the brain or to, you know, um, stabilize parts of the brain so that they're not as affected by the abnormal tau. There's different approaches, uh, but this knowledge that we've gotten has really inspired a lot of different research efforts to find uh, you know, a treatment or a cure for uh, tauopathies, including CBD and PSP. The conditions are relatively rare, and so sometimes that can feel somewhat isolating to the person or to the caregivers. Um, we have a support group for atypical Parkinsonism at Penn um, that's run out of um, the Movement Disorder Center at Pennsylvania Hospital. Um, but there is um, the Cure PSP uh, foundation, 
um, which actually covers both um, PSP and CBD, that provides a lot of information for caregivers about the condition. It um, provides news about clinical trials, and it also has, you know, some information about finding support in your area.